Greetings, I'm Brian from RC Workboat Haven. Welcome to part seven of the 1898 Supply Steamer build. This is gonna be the final video in this series. We get the boat pretty well ready to take down to the lake. In this video, we're gonna be finishing a lifeboat. We're gonna work on oars, lines. We're gonna make some davits. We're gonna do the rigging. We're gonna finish the masts off. We'll be making fire extinguishers. We'll be making a spotlight, horn, navigation lights, and we're going to make a simple wiring system for the steamer. Little touch-ups and tweaks here and there. Lots of work ahead, so let's get going. On the after end of the top deck, I'm going to install a lifeboat on Davids. The arrangement will be similar to the one I used on the tugboat and the lumber hooker. This dinghy has a basswood hull. It measures seven and one quarter inches long by three and one quarter inches wide. So at one half inch to the foot, that equals 15 and a half feet long and six and a half feet wide. I took a mold off that dinghy and I showed that in part one of this build series. For this fiberglass DIY build, we're going to use a fiberglass hull. So first I'm going to sand all the gloss off the gel coat with 80 grit sandpaper and I'm going to coat the outside and inside with latex primer sealer. Then my basswood parts will stick to this with wood glue. I have a piece for the transom. I have two strips for the shear. I have a back seat, middle seat, and front seat. I have the floorboards and I have little blocks that I'm going to use for the oar locks. I've given them all a coat on one side with latex slate color. The lifeboat now has latex primer sealer on it. I've installed a stem piece out of 1 8 basswood and put a strip along the bow here. On the other side, I've wood glued on a skeg. I've taken the center floorboard strip and I've wood glued it into the hull. So now I'm going to finish off the floorboards, the shear line, and the transom. So here's the dinghy with the basswood parts glued in place. On the latex primer sealer, I'm just using Gorilla Type 2 water resistant glue, and it seems to stick very well. And now I have two coats of Varathane on the lifeboat. I've drilled a two millimeter hole in the transom and in the bow for lines. So next we have to fabricate some oars for the lifeboat. To make oars, I'm using bamboo skewers. They're about eight inches long from the dollar store. I cut off the end and I wood glued a piece of one eighth basswood onto the wide part. And then I pencil marked the rough shape of the oar blade and the handle. I shaped the oar using a one inch diameter cylindrical sanding disc on the drill press. And I drilled a two millimeter hole for the oar lock. And then I stained the oars using wood finish stain marker. Next, I used a small jewelry clasp that looks like this. And then I fastened that fixture into the hole in the oars. These oars measure four inches long, which makes them about eight feet in one half scale. And as usual, I made a bunch of spares. <laughs> Next, I'm going to take some small brass screw eyes and screw them in to the blocks on the lifeboat. Next, I've arranged the oars in the lifeboat, and I'm going to drill a one millimeter wire hole here, 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 and here. And so here are the oars wired on. I'm going to snip the wires off at about a quarter of an inch. And now using a ruler, I bend the twisted part down between the two oars. So that looks nice and tidy. Now, of course, these oar locks and oars are not exact scale reproductions of the real thing, but they do hint at it, and that is my objective. Next, I'd like to install the lifeboat onto the deck. I've made two mounts for the lifeboat, and they're going to be bolted onto the canopy. They're made of basswood. I painted them black and given them two coats of barathane, and I've drilled two pilot holes here in the after one and one in the forward mount. So now the lifeboat is well centered and it is a loose fit on the cradle. 
I used three millimeter flathead bolts and three nuts. Next, I'd like to install two davits, and I want to make them removable. The davits are made of 1 8 inch solid steel. I bent them by hand. At the top end, on each piece, I flattened it off with a hammer on an anvil, and then drilled a 3 millimeter hole through it. For a rope cleat, I'm using a little bit of steel here, flat bar, and a thin piece of copper tubing. I crimped it on and then super glued it into place. And then I applied gun blue to the bare metal and got a fairly dark appearance and gave them both one coat of Varathane. On the upper deck, I've drilled a 1 8 hole here and here. I drilled that 1 8 hole larger to 3 16 so that my David would fit through easily from the top. And now I have to locate and fix the bottom end so the David will turn. For the forward davit, I've located the hole here, and that makes the davit parallel to this post in every direction. I've drilled a 1 8 hole, and I've located the after davit hole right here. To form a shoe for the bottom of the davit post, I'm using a brass shell. These are hollow, and they have a closed end. I've drilled out the closed end with a 3 millimeter bit, and then I put a three millimeter bolt down the inside. After the bolt was seated on the bottom, I used super glue to hold it in place. Then I painted the brass with an oil base slate color. And here are the two bases in place and the two nuts on the underneath. Now, before I rig any pulleys and lines onto this lifeboat arrangement, I want to do some touch ups. I've opened up the angle on this davit. The dinghy looks a lot cleaner in here now. So now we're ready for some DIY rigging. I'm going to cut some two millimeter diameter cord. I think it's a nylon cotton blend. After I cut the cord, I like to put a quick flame on it. And that stops the ends from unraveling. Now I want my dinghy and the mounts to be removable, and I don't want to have to undo knots. So I'm going to use these small jewelry pelican hooks. I've expanded the hole in the hook to two millimeters so my cord will fit through it. On two lines, I just looped it over and dropped CA glue to hold the two pieces together. And on the other line, I just made a loop to fit through the pelican hook. And then I looped the lines through the holes in the lifeboat mount. So now I set the dinghy in place. So I've arranged the pelican hooks to be about center line on the boat. So now I have a removable lifeboat. Next, I can drop in the davits through the holes and into the shoe. And I'll wire pulleys on here and here. And I used thin black wire from the dollar store to do that. And this wire is very strong. I CA glued two loops to hold two pelican clips. I clipped the cord onto the lifeboat. And now I'm going to fasten these lines onto the davit cleats. And here's the lifeboat and davits. All of it easily removable. Here I've released the pelican hooks on the cradle. I've made a forward and an aft mooring line, and I've CA glued a loop into each one. And now when the pelican hooks are passed through the loops forward and aft, the lifeboat can be swung outboard on the davits. Next, I'd like to finish the rigging on the forward and after mast. At the top end of each mast, I put in a screw eye. At the bottom, I drilled a hole and passed through a 332nd cotter pin and then bent the ends over to form the cleat. I've painted these parts with matte latex and varathane. Next, I'm going to wire on a pulley at the top. And here's the two pulleys. Next, I CA a loop in the end of two millimeter cord, and I put the loop around the bottom end of the cleat, up through the inside of the block, and at the bottom, I tie up the cleat. And here are the two masts. They're all ready for flags, banners, or just plain.
Around the boat where these lions go through the hoss holes, I tied a knot on the inside and then surrounded the knot with wood glue. And then I pulled the line tight inside the hoss hole. And up here, I CA glued them in place. So now this area should be fairly watertight. I've also done a little bit of rigging here on the fenders. The fenders are held on by a 632 bolt and a lock nut. I wanted to cover up the exposed head on the bolt. So I drilled a hole right through the sides above and below the bolt. And then I passed some three millimeter cord through the holes, formed an X pattern and CA glued that. So now it kind of appears that these fenders are lashed onto the boat with line. And I can still push the line aside with a screwdriver to tighten the bolt. So hopefully this will pass as somewhat authentic. <laughs> I've made four deck mounted fire extinguishers for the steamer. The body is made of a shell casing. The handle on the side and the pump handle at the top are made from the ground wire from house wiring. The spout is made from a brass nail. I drilled holes through the casing and CA glued these parts in place. The cap piece was made from pieces of uh, Christmas tree ornaments and these, these just clip into the top of a ball, for example. I drilled and tapped the bottom of the metal for a three millimeter bolt. I'm pretty sure this fire extinguisher could have been made with a wooden dowel as well and painted like this. I filed a taper on the bottom so the extinguisher conforms to the slope on the deck. And the fire extinguishers are screwed on from the underneath and they're in fairly good alignment. And I have two aft of the pilot house and two aft of the main cabin. Next, I'd like to put some lights on this steamer. We're going to need port and starboard navigation lights. We're going to need a spotlight and I'm going to put a light here under the canopy. I want the lighting system to be as simple as possible. I just want to use materials that are on hand at the dollar store or the local hardware store. I'm going to use multicolored lights from the dollar store. These only cost a few dollars and there's 40 in a box. Each package comes with a box that contains two AA batteries and an on off switch. So I'll be able to run my lighting on a completely separate system. The lights in the package are all different colors, but they appear clear. So you have to test them first and then simply snip them off when you find the right ones. I'm going to use solder seal connectors and these are a heat shrink and they're used with a heat gun. And for wiring, I'm going to use 18 or 16 gauge. They both work fine. After the wires are soldered together, I cover them with heat shrink. After the heat shrink, the lights look like this, and I just put a bit of marker on each light so I could tell green from red. To mount the lights, I've made two small fixtures out of basswood. One green, one red. In each one, I drilled a one quarter inch hole to insert the light bulb. I have a small screw that can be tightened down onto the body of the wire to hold it in place. And I have a three millimeter bolt and nut to fasten this to the deck. And the port side is the same thing, just opposite. The light will go up through the hole. And then this little screw is tightened down. All these dollar store lights have a tough plastic collar on them. So the screw, when it's tightened down, will not damage the wire. And I just tighten the screw like this. And now they're ready to mount onto the pilot house roof. This is the same spotlight that I use on the uh, tugboat and the lumber hooker. It's a copper plumbing end cap with a hole drilled in the end and a hole on each side for a three millimeter bolt and nut. There's a loop made of brass round with a hole drilled in the bottom. And I have a base and I have about a one inch three millimeter bolt and nut to fasten this onto the deck. This copper base is made from copper suspension strapping that's bought by the roll. And I use this to make other strips and so on. So it's very handy. The loop is a piece of flat bar brass with three holes drilled in it. 
And here's the searchlight with the wire attached, bulb inside, and a little bit of silver paint on the inside of the cap. I might add a piece of clear plastic here to act as a lens. And I've also made a horn out of a golf tee. I've given it two coats of copper and one coat of varathane. And this will be bolted onto the pilot house roof. And I have prepared holes here in the roof. Port navigation light, starboard navigation light, horn, and spotlight. So here are the three lights and the horn. Easy to put on, easy to take off. I fastened on the two brass screws that hold on the pilot house roof. And I've run the wires through the underside of the top deck. I have a white light under the canopy that's been bolted on to the deck. I've left plenty of slack in my wire so that if I remove this roof, I can still flip it over and access the nuts on the inside. And I've used solder seal connectors to connect all the red and all the blue together. And I've also soldered in a red and a blue bullet connector. Next, I pushed all that wire slack through the hole into the pilot house. And I held the lines with a little metal bracket here that's bolted through the top of the deck. The battery box sits in a little holder and is held on by an elastic band. And the batteries can be replaced easily. I always take them out when I'm not using the boat. And on the two wires coming out of the battery box, I soldered on a blue and a red wire with two bullet connectors, and that completes the circuit. I turn on the light switch here, and I have light, 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 and light. Now when I'm running the steamer down at the lake, I have access to my lights by reaching through here. So let's see how she looks. I do notice that uh, this red light appears to be white in the video, but in real life it's an intense red color. So I'm not sure what causes that. One thing I like most about this wiring method is the materials are easily available and everything is easy to repair or change. And that's what I want at Workboat Haven. So I just want to go back to the rigging on the lifeboat. Earlier in the video, I CA glued the cord together when it formed a loop. And uh, I was afraid that maybe it wasn't strong enough or it would let me down later. So I decided to crimp on metal sleeves wherever there's a loop. And I think it looks much better. And I also put one on each mast here. And when I'm running the steamer down at the lake, the top section would just lift off like this but I have to be able to fix this section on so that if the boat rolls, this part doesn't roll off. So at the after end and the forward end, I'm drilling a 1 8 hole on an angle. And now at both ends, I have a hole drilled on an angle. At the bow and stern, I'm going to use a cotter pin and push that in on an angle. But as you can see, there's not much room to get your fingers in here and it could be a little bit awkward, especially if the hands are wet. So I have two 332nd cotter pins that are cut off to about one inch long, and they've been blackened with gun blue. I put a loop and a crimp in both ends, and at the other end, I've crimped on an electrical fitting, and these are for 16 or 18 gauge wire, and are available from the hardware store. You can hold them like this with a pair of pliers and then pull off the plastic part like that. So that's a handy little fitting and that could easily be adapted to other rigging situations. So now I can bolt these two eyes to the deck and it's going to be easy to get my finger under it and I won't lose my pin. And here's the forward pin and the after pin. 
So here's the steamer with the superstructure attached to the hull. Good solid connection. I've got the cradle painted black. Now on the steamer, everything below this deck is watertight, so it should be able to handle some fairly rough weather. Steamer should be able to roll like this without any water getting below. But I will have to have enough ballast to keep it on its feet. In part two, I covered the running gear, the motors and electronics. I've reinstalled those items, so as I hold the boat now, it is ready to run. So let's see how much this steamer weighs. And the steamer weighs in at 13 pounds. My next step will be to take the steamer down to the lake and trim it to the water line. I'll be using pieces of steel as ballast placed deep in the hull. Once my steamer is in proper trim, I won't forget to fill the shaft tube and the rudder tube with marine grease before I take it for a serious run. And here's the supply steamer navigating through the harbors and channels of Georgian Bay. So that brings us to the end of the 1898 supply steamer fiberglass DIY bill series. It was an interesting project and a lot of the features here were things that I just basically thought up the same as you would. Many of the methods I use are not the only way of doing the job and that's what I hope is that they can be improved on or you, it would give you an idea on how to do it a different way and so on. And that's what the hobby is all about the fun of experimenting. I'll be waiting for a nice sunny day in the spring to take this little ship down and take it for its first run. So I'm really looking forward to that. Well, thank you very much for watching the series and I hope you enjoyed it. In the next video, I'm gonna do some experimenting with a mechanical sound system using no electronics that maybe you could adapt to your future RC workboat. So I'll see you then.